start ever. I, <laughs> I got it all fake cough. And then I have like a <clears throat> cardiac arrest at the start of the podcast. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to chapter 94. Damn it, I should check. 94 of memoirs. I think it's 94. Last week was 93, which means yes, it is 94. Um, welcome to memoirs of a white guy. I am said white guy that the title was referring to or is referring to. Um, if you happen to think that that was you, the, oh, I'm like if you're white and listening to this and a guy and you always went, this podcast is dedicated to me. Nah, it wasn't. I've always been the white guy in the podcast. And if it took you this long to work that out, then God help you. All right, because I've probably never mentioned you in the podcast if you're thinking that. But um, hey, thanks for tuning in. But it is this is an auto autobiographical podcast about my life, and um, which is the most arrogant shit, isn't it? Just this, what I do every week. It's like, hey guys, want to hear me chat for forty minutes about what I did? Well. Stop what you're doing and listen up, because I'm about to tell you. If that is not the widest mindset of all time, then I don't know what is, alright? That's, I mean, but yet, we still live in a society where every week 2,000 people are like, I will listen to that, and if you're hearing this now, you're one of them. (laughs) You're just listening to a guy talk about... About what he did during the week. And yes, occasionally yeah, I might give you a little bit of a giggle. I might make you smirk, laugh. Oh, I never thought about it like that before. But really, I mean, what a waste of time. But hey, thanks for tuning in again. I can't wait to waste another 40 minutes, maybe more of your time this week. Um, guys, it's been a big one, alright? <clears throat> I had a few big revelations. Um, that, that was one of them, actually. One of my revelations this week was learning the word revelation. I think on the radio the other night, I was like, Hey, Lewis, I've had a big relevation. And he was like, what now? And I was like, I said... And (laughs) at this point, I should immediately stop, think, backtrack, and go, Hey, Luke, do you have a track record of not being able to pronounce the majority of the English language? Yes, you do. Well, maybe stop and think and consider the the fact that you might be wrong here as well. But I just stood my ground. We're on, you know, the biggest radio station in Melbourne. And I'm like, he's like, what now? And I was like, relevation. You know, like when you've had an epiphany or or something like that. And he goes, do you mean revelation? And I went, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I do. And I really wish, I really wish that I'd stop finding out shit like this on radio with about 50,000 people listening. That would be unreal right now. If <laughs> but hey, look, you got to learn somehow. And I happen to be an, in an environment where a lot of people are, are tuning in to what I'm doing, but also happen to be a fucking moron. So the only way to learn is publicly and have you guys along for the ride. So, yeah, I've had a big revelation this week, um, that being one of them. I actually started keeping a list, by the way, uh, of dumb things I say on radio. It's called List of Stupid Shit I Say on the Radio. I don't know why I keep a list. I just think it's funny. Um, th- these, are, these are literally, and by the way, this is just in the last, like, two weeks. Right? So, the, I just started this list now. Uh, so, there's uh, Relevation instead of Revelation. Um, I always say Luke instead of Lewis. So, I'll go to speak to Lewis on air. Like, often Lewis will be like, if you haven't listened to the radio show, right? Lewis will be like, after each song, we'll be like, Luke and Lewis on the Fox. And then, one of us will just start speaking. Sometimes, he might be like, Luke and Lewis on the Fox. Now, Luke... Blah, 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 and we just get into whatever we're talking about. And sometimes, he'll go, Luke and Lewis on the Fox, and then it's up to me to kind of initiate the conversation. I don't know why, but sometimes, he goes, Luke and Lewis on the Fox, and then I go, now, Luke, during the week, I was... What the f... 
Fuck. I'm Luke, guys. I'm not Lewis. I'm Luke. But I always go to talk to myself. I'm always like, now Luke. And I'm like, oh no, that's me. It's happened twice so far. It happened last night on air. And it also happened like a, a couple of weeks ago as well. I don't know how I have a job. They pay me to do it. They legitimately pay me. And I can't even get the, the name of the host of the show right. And I'm one of the two hosts. <laughs> the other day I also, I also said Jon Snow instead of John So. So, there used to be this, uh, the mayor of Melbourne used to be a, uh, a, a little, like, uh, Asian, like, little Chinese guy. Maybe I wasn't Chinese. I don't really remember what he looked like, to be honest. I just remember, like, there was this awesome dude who had this campaign to be the mayor of Melbourne who was like, it was like, John So is my bro. And, like, everyone was chanting it. And it was, like, the coolest dude ever, right? And... It was like John So kind of became like a bit of a cultural phenomenon in Melbourne. Like, it was like this meme for like... This was like five years ago. Like, I just just remember people used to be like, John So is my bro. Because it was like this super left of field dude running for mayor. And I think he ended up becoming mayor of Melbourne. Which, I don't know why we have a mayor. What do mayors do? Like, uh, what do mayors do? Like, in, in American films, it's like, oh, welcome the mayor. And he just cuts the red tape. Is that all mayors do? Just cut shit with big, comically big scissors at store openings and, you know, they attend sausage sizzles. Just, what do mayors do? If someone can tell me during the week, that would be great. Actually, I'm going to look it up now. What do mayors do? What I don't know any mayors. Traditionally, mayors oversee a city's, city's main departments, including the police, fire, education, housing, and transportation departments. Isn't that what the government does? Or is the mayor... I mean, I'm assuming the mayor's a part of government. Look, I'm going to stick with my definition, which was um, sausage sizzles and cutting big red tape is generally what they're seen doing. And wearing hard hats and just visiting mines and, you know, holding babies in photos. That's essentially a mayor's job, right? It's also essentially the prime minister's job. I mean, <laughs> that was rude because I'm sure they do a lot of hard work. But, you know, it's just fucking boring. I don't care. Um... So, yeah, we're talking about John So. A caller came up and was like, oh, we're in this restaurant and, like, John So was there. And then I was like, oh, that's so weird that you met John Snow. Like, from Game of Thrones. And the whole time, I didn't realise I was saying John Snow. Like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I'm still talking about the former mayor of Melbourne, John So. But the whole time, I was just saying John... Oh, did I say it wrong again? Yeah, John So. And the whole time, I was saying... Jon Snow. Like, I was just talking about Kit, Kit Harrington's character in Game of Thrones. Like, just, I'm just an idiot. Like, and, and, and it's my job. Like, I don't know. Do other, are other people this bad at their jobs? Like, if I was an electric, like, sorry, if I was an electrician, I would have been electrocuted by now. Like, if I was a plumber, the equivalent, like, of being that bad at your job, I will be covered in shit every day. Like, it... I, I'm just not... I'm just not good at my job. <laughs> and that's the whole appeal of the show. Is, like, let's... Buddy, watch these two guys. Buddy, just... Look at these guys giving it a go. I don't know, like, what... Because <laughs> the show's successful. That's the thing. Luke and Lewis is becoming, very quickly, quite a successful radio show. And I don't know if it's because people... Um, just think like, oh my god, these guys are so stupid. This is hilarious. But, man, and another one. Oh, there was another one that happened as well. Oh, this was so stupid. I need to add this to my list. Catwoman. So the other night, man, this is just so dumb. This is like new levels of stupid, even for me, right? Lewis did this segment <clears throat> where, uh... He played these sound effects. He's like, Luke, I've got some big news for you. I'm sure you're pretty thrilled about it. He played three sound effects, and I had to guess what the news was, right? The first sound effect was a cat meowing, but it sounded like a baby, so it was super confusing. It was like, meow, and I was like, is that a baby or a cat? Either way, that's a shit sound effect, right? And the next one was um, the Batman sound effect, right? Like the Batman theme song. And the next one was... Uh, uh, marriage sound effects, and I was like, oh, because at first I was like, oh, no, it was like, 
<laughs> okay, this is what it was first. It was like, it was the marriage one first. So it was like a baby noise, then r- r- like wedding bells, and then the Batman theme song. So I was guessing I was going along. So I was like, are you marrying a baby, Lewis? And then I probably shouldn't have said that on radio. It implies that Lewis is in a relationship with an infant, and that, in hindsight, probably not a great thing to say on radio, but it was pretty funny. So, uh, <laughs> and then... He played the Batman sound effect, and I was like, oh, is um, Batman marrying the cat lady? And he's like, what? I was like, is is Batman marrying cat lady? And he's like, it's not cat lady. I was like, oh, no, what's it called? Um, oh, bloody, the, the pussy, no, that shouldn't say that. Um, the cat, cow, cat girl, cat girl. And then he's like, what is the opposite of man? So it's Batman, but it's cat. And I was like, cat female. No, um, cat, cat woman. But that was 30 seconds, probably 45 seconds later, I got there. And just again, live on radio, can't take back anything you say. And now everyone knows that I didn't know who, because I was like, Anne Hathaway's character in the movie with Batman and she rides the bike. Like, I knew what I was wanted to say and I couldn't think of Catwoman. And then a, gl- a girl called the show. We didn't put her on air. But this lady just called the show and to laugh at us. She called up 131060. And by the way, you can, sh- you can call the radio show anytime when we're on, right? And get involved. It's always good fun. She called 131060. Our producer picked it up and was like, hey, like, Luke and Lewis... What's up? Like, we didn't ask a question, like, why are you calling? And she's like, I just want to say that that was the funniest thing I've ever heard, but yet the most frustrating thing I've ever listened to. Seriously, like, Luke is so dumb. And then just hung up. (laughs) So, I love that feedback. So good. Um, I'll keep going down my list, actually. Um... Oh yeah, we played this game called The Name Game, right? And this was Lewis and I both being dumb. This was incredibly stupid. Uh, we play this game called The Name Game where we try and guess people's names, right? We try and guess their people's names by asking them three questions. Lewis asked the question, does your name have a double letter in it? And then the other person was like, um, y- no, right? And then I was like, great. So we asked them two more questions like cat or dog or something like that. And then we get to the end and I'm like, Lewis, I'm thinking Kelly. Uh, I, I can imagine a Kelly with a dog. And this whole time, neither of us are thinking like, oh, Kelly has a double L, you dickhead. And then Lewis goes, so like already, it's like dumb and dumber listening to our show. So I'm like, Kelly. And then Lewis goes, hmm, I was thinking Melissa. <laughs> oh my God. It must be painful to listen to. And then, so we finished the segment. We didn't guess her name. Even the girl on the phone was like, uh, are you guys serious? And we just thought she was fucking rude. We're like, man, this chick is really rude right now. And it's because we just didn't realize how stupid we were. We get off air and our producer just goes, you do realize that Kelly and Melissa both have a double letter in it. And she clearly said no. And those were the only two names you guessed. And we were like, yep, great, awesome. And once again, that this is our job. So, I'm an idiot, Um, and anyway, I had a revelation this week that, hey, guys, what? This is going to shock some of you, especially some of you who are quite outspoken, opinionated, maybe force your opinions on other people, cough vegans, cough feminism, cough all the other shit, right? Maybe some of those people who are like, you know what I think? Hey, guys, guess what? A no one cares. What? But my opinion... Ah, shh, I'm going to stop you there. No one cares. I don't know why it took me this long, and I've thought about that before, but I really gave it a long, hard think. You know what it is? I was walking down the street, right? And I was just, I was, I was having a good day. I was in a good mood, right? So this wasn't me being salty. I was, I was living it up, you know. I'm walking down the street. Almost had that kind of '80s like sitcom strut about me, you know, like cutting away 
from like a scene in Friends and then like you go to another scene and you know maybe Jerry's walking down the street and you know and, and, and maybe he's with Kramer because Kramer says something silly you know or George said something silly and they got that strut going so I'm kind of walking with that with that Seinfeld strut right and then this guy uh, is standing on the side of the street he's flying people and you know generally I'll hit those people with I don't know if you've heard we've talked about on the radio show Lewis and I have a tactic where if someone ever flies you with something you say like oh I'm sorry I'm pregnant or oh sorry I'm gay right and then they just go wait what and it's like and you're gone right because they might be like hey hey man like do you need a new electricity company and you're like sorry I'm gay and they're like wait that's not what I was about to say and and it just it breaks the person right it it literally just breaks the person. You can say anything. You're like, oh, sorry, I'm actually a fish right now. And they'll be like, but this isn't about being a fish. What? Um, my brain's broken temporarily. It's like their brain goes on dial-up for three seconds, right? So if you ever want to avoid someone who's, who's flyering you on the street, just hit them with anything. Sorry, I'm pregnant. Sorry. Or just hit them with it. Sorry, Amy Shark says hi. And they'll be like, but I didn't mention it. And you're gone. So that's what I do, right? So I'm walking down the street, right? And I, and I already had, I'm, I'm gay or I'm pregnant, locked and loaded. I was actually going to hit him with an I'm pregnant, right? And the joke there being, I'm a male and I don't know if it's tummy and I'm, I'm a male. So that's, that's, that's insane, right? So I was like walking down the street, had that Seinfeld struck on. And then there's like, hey man, uh, do you want to hit me with like... And then I was, I was expecting like maybe uh, a charity thing, maybe like a... Uh, sign up to this mobile plan, blah, blah, blah. And then Willie said, Hey, man, have you ever wanted to follow the power of God? And it just threw me. Like, usually I'll throw them. Like, usually I'll just be like, I'm pregnant, on my way. He's like, Hey, man, have you ever thought of following the power of God? And I was like, it would have been a great time to say I'm gay. Because then they would have been like, no, well, you're not welcome. Right? <laughs> I should have hit him with it, I'm gay. But then, it just broke me. I was like, oh my god, I wasn't expecting to be, you know, try, like converted right now in the street. And I don't know how, I never understand, like, good on you if you're religious, and, and that's great. Like, I'm just, no, I'm not personally, but I, I, you know, great. If that's what makes you happy, and that's what makes you feel that you have a value and purpose in life, then that's great. Because sometimes, I'll be honest, I'm, I guess I'm an atheist. I just never really care or think about it, which kind of brings me back to my point here. But, you know, I just don't care care about that stuff. I've never been religious or anything. I, I think the one time I set foot in a church was to film a video. Um, and, oh, no, and I've also been to a little market there once in Phillip Island, and I bought some jams. So that was, that, that was the second time I've been in a church. But, um... I'm just not that kind of person, right? So, and, 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 and good on you if you are, but I was just completely taken back, right? It just broke me. I was like, what? who who really thinks that, do those people really think that, so someone like me walking past who's never been religious before in their life will go, you know what, mate? I've never thought about following the power of God, but because you got such a bloody damn good smile and I like your energy... I will sign up to your fucking cult right here on the spot. I mean, I was just heading down to the post office down the road, and I was going to swing by the baker in the way back, but fuck that. Where's Jesus? Right? <laughs> like, has that ever happened? Has anyone joined a religion on a whim? Do people do that? Really? Like... Isn't it a thing that you give a little bit of thought? Like, I feel like that's a big decision in your life to be like, oh, I'm going to commit to a new religion. You know, often people might be converted due to marriage or like, you know, that their partner might be religious. So then they, to, to understand what their partner's into and be involved with that area of their life, they might convert to whatever religion they are. And that's great, right? But no one is just walking down the street with a Seinfeld strap and going like, hmm, I wasn't planning on praying today. But if anyone asks me, I guess I'll bloody, I'll sign on the dotted line. Wow. So he goes, yeah. Are you, he's like, hey mate, have you ever thought of following the power of God? And I was like, um, um, what? And he's like, the power of God. And then he had me. Already I have stopped, I stopped. I stopped like an idiot, right? And then he started giving me the spiel. He started going, man, like, you know, 
Um, so a lot of people, and, and he, he came in on the defensive because he knew, I, like, by my body language, I was like, I don't mind, I want to be talking to you, man. But he came in kind of like on the defensive, which was a smart move. He's like, hey, man, I know you probably get this all the time, but, you know, it's... And they, they try and play it cool, like they're not trying to make you fall in love with Jesus. They're like He's like, do you consider yourself a happy person? Do you consider yourself uh, forgiving, kind, caring? Do you love family? What are your core values? And I'm just like, huh... Yeah, like, what what person on the street's like, I hate being happy, I'm sad, I don't forgive people, and I hate my family. Because even if you were that person, generally, you're not out on the street strutting along, alright? You're in a dark room with no mates, fucking, I don't know, just so, trying to summon Satan or some shit, and you're not going to get those people into your religion, alright? So I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm stuck in a conversation with this guy, right? And he's laying all the moves on me. And then it hits me halfway through this conversation that I'm like, huh, I don't care. I don't care. And I wasn't rude about it. I didn't be like, oh, I don't care, man, to his face. He was like, so, yeah. Um, and I was like, I, I stopped him. I was like, hey, sorry, um, I don't, I don't want to. This. I don't want whatever this is. Uh, have a great day. I don't. I, I, and I just kind of started my way out of there. And he would have been like, wait, what? And then I just walked away. Guys, it, you don't have to speak to those people. And I know that. I knew that going into it. But I got halfway through listening to him and I was like, ha, oh, don't give a fuck. I'm busy. I can be strutting right now. But he stopped my strut. And now I'm listening to his smart. Alright? <laughs> so I just kept going. Guys, I don't care. And then the rest of my day, I'm still strutting down the street, right? And then all of a sudden, this guy tries to get me into his bakery. And he's got a couple of samples. And I wasn't hungry. And I was like... But I was ready, because I already had this attitude. And I was like, I don't care. And then I get home, I go on Twitter. And all these people are like... Meh, 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 meh. This is my opinion on this. Just put it on the internet. And I was gonna write a tweet saying like, oh man, no one cares, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, why even write that? Because no one cares. Even when, like, guys, no one cares. Right now, think to yourself, what is your opinion on Donald Trump? Oh, stop. I don't care. No one cares. Don't post it on YouTube. Don't post it on Facebook. Don't post it on Twitter. What? Don't care. I'm gonna go home and play Tony Hawk. See ya. And that's what I did. I played Tony Hawk the other night, and it was awesome. I've been doing that this week. I've, I've had a bit of time off. I'm going to move on from that rant thing. It, it, honestly, that rant went nowhere. But the religious bit was pretty funny. But after that, I, I kind of lost where my point was, and now I'm just going to move on. <laughs> this is Memoirs of a White Guy, alright? Don't expect me to have any opinions worth hearing about. Because again, <laughs> no one cares. Um... So yeah, I was playing Tony Hawk the other night, and, I, and I've been doing that the other day. And I'm not talking about like, oh, like Tony Hawk on like one of the newer ones. I don't even know if there is a new one. I'm talking Pro Skater 2 and 3. I'm talking like 2001 shit. I don't know when that shit was made, but like, man, I've just been doing that. Because Emily at the start of the week was like, you need to stop. And I was like, stop what? She's like, just, just like stop. Stop, like, because I, I think I spent one day, I spent 12 hours straight editing that Love Island video, then I woke up the next morning, and then I had like a gig, and I went to radio, so I was like, I, I think I had, uh, one day, I think I was awake for 18 hours, just doing shit, like, uh, comedy shit, right, and then, I, I, saw, I think Emily saw me at the end of it, and she's like, I just would have looked like shit, she's like, what, what have you been doing, and I was like, oh, I just like editing, and just... Uh, stuff, and she's like, you need to just chill out for like five minutes. Just she's like, when was the last time you did something that you wanted to do? And I was like, well, today I, I needed to edit, so I was, you know. And she's like, but when was the last time you did something just for you, just just for Luke? And I was like, uh, January. <laughs> I think it was January. I remember playing Star Wars Battlefront for about four hours one day over the over the Christmas period, um, and it was great. And I I, was, I got good by the end of it. Um, it was, yeah, and, and 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 that was the last time. And I was like, and it scared the shit out of me. I was like, oh, 
I don't really do it. I like I, when I say I do stuff for me, like I go for runs and stuff. But she's like, when have you done something that you just you like doing, but there's no gain for you? You just like it. You just like doing a thing because because you're interested in it. And I'm like, well, I like making videos. She's like, yeah, but again, that's your your career. And, and I was like, okay, well, I like I like doing radio. And I'm like, <laughs> and then I realized I was like, oh, I haven't done anything. I've 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 all I've done this year is been like comedy for five months straight. Wake up, oh dicks. And then I talk about it on stage and stuff, right? So I was like, okay, I'm just going to do something for me. So I went home one night after that, and I was like, what do I want to do? And because this was such an unfamiliar feeling to me, I sat in my room on my chair for a bit, and I started spinning around in my chair, and I was like, this is kind of fun, I guess. Maybe this is what I want to do. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, I could probably do something better than spinning on my chair. And then I was like, you know what I haven't played in a while? Nintendo 64 games and I just whipped out Tony Hawk, Goldeneye, Smash Bros. Man, three hours later I was like halfway through the campaign of Banjo-Kazooie and I was like, what the, What has happened with my life? You know, I'm, I'm about to head on to Zelda right now. This is so unheard of and it was great and you know what? And I came out after that day, I went to bed and the next morning I was like refreshed and I was like, oh, I want to do stuff now. So you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to maybe allow like an hour, a couple of hours a week just doing Luke shit. Just doing me, man. And that's great. I'm so excited. And it it's so super sad that it took Emily, it took an outside person to see that I was killing myself just doing this shit, which I love doing, by the way, this, that's why I never felt like, I was like, oh, this is fun, so, but yeah, man, Tony Hawk is awesome, dude, I mean, I, I, I'm such an old school gamer, you know what I mean, like, like, and people might be quite shocked, like, you know, like, that I don't play video games, because that's what so many, I'm sure, like, most of you, like, girl or boy, whatever, particularly guys, I don't know why, but, you know, maybe, obviously, lots of girls still game too, but, like, guys are, like, pathetically into it, I feel like girls hide it better, um, but yeah, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people who, like, play video games who are listening to this, and that's great. I just don't. I, I like, I, I went through a real phase in high school where I was like, video games were, like, what I did, because I hated school, right? I just hated being there, so I used to play games in class, I used to play games when I got home, and I just, like, hated my life, so I just poured myself into video games. I'm not saying that playing video games is bad, that's just how I dealt with hating myself. <laughs> and then as soon as I found something I liked, I would have... I now would rather be doing this stuff than, you know, video games. They just bore me. I don't know why. Because, uh, like, I just felt like I did that. Like, I felt like I spent, like, a good three, four, five years of my life just doing that. You know, like, and, and I was always into the classics. So I was never, like, into the new thing that came out. Like, I was always, like, like, during high school, like, you know, I, I played all the Pokemons again. And, like, I, I beat all the Pokemons and then... I bit like all the Call of Duties campaigns and then like like Halo like yeah I'm just sick of this like this like Fortnite shit you know what I mean they was like oh I'm fucking this new game and I'm just like man 1v1 me like Blood Gulch Halo Combat Evolved I will fuck you up alright but I'm just I'm just an old school gamer I'm a retro guy you know like that's sad that games from 2005 are now old school but it's true I'm into that. I'm into Tony Hawk, alright? Sue me. I know there's probably people who look, oh, Luke sucks. Yeah. If this is the first time you're realising that, then fucking God help you. Um, <laughs> I have like the, a terrible, I have like an unorthodox taste in everything. Like, I like weird music, but like, still quite popular, but I like weird games that are still quite popular. Like, I love Need for Speed Most Wanted. But for most people, that's like, a, oh, I remember that game, man. That was sick. I was, like, playing that recently. Again, this week, because Emily was like, just do something for you. And I was like, well, now I'm going to go through and play every single video game that I've missed. And I did that, and it was great. <laughs> um, and another big thing that happened this week, guys, whew, other than all my gaming that happened, um, another big thing was I finally got to tell Amy Shark that Amy Shark says hi. It was, I uh, like uh, tears. I mean, I was. It was so. It was such a joyous moment in my life. And it's one of those things where we. I guess we'd known that for a while now that Amy Shark was gonna come on the show. We had a date for a few weeks, but I don't know. You just. We just like never really like. 
you, you, you're not allowed to tell, to, like, say, you're not allowed to announce things like that. And more just like, a, that, you know, just in case things like that fall through, you know, you can never know. She could be like, oh, she can't do this date. Sorry, boy, she can't do your show. And if we announce Amy Shark's coming in the show, and then she bails, and then we look stupid. So you just don't, like, announce that stuff. But, yeah, well, I've been looking forward to that for about a few weeks now, which was good fun. And uh, she was super nice. And, uh, and, and uh, yeah, she, she, like, she, she follows our show. We found out, like, she was, like, she bought up our No Track album, like, off air. She's like, oh, I had the uh, No Track album release go. And we're just like, oh, that's right, because she recorded a thing on radio. She's done another thing for our show. Anyway, um, Amy Shark came on the show. She was on our show yesterday. The podcast's not out yet, but if you listen to this later on the track, go check it out. Um, it was super fun uh, chat we had with her. We actually wrote her a new song of I Said Hi. Go check it out. It's on the radio page. Um... But yeah, it's, uh, that's one of the hardest things about like doing, um, doing like you know comedy and, and and just just creating in general. And lots of creators probably feel this is like musicians. It'll be even more painful for musicians where you work so hard on something and you're doing all this shit behind the scenes, but you're not allowed to announce it yet. So in the period where you're where you're most excited about whatever project you're working on, none of your audience knows about it. And then finally, as it goes through all the jumps and hurdles and loopholes and blah, 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 things that has to go to to get public, right? So whether that's, you know, contacting your management, blah, blah, like, I would have loved to be like, guys, Amy Shark's coming on the show, get pumped, but can't say that. And that was when I was excited about it. And then, like, we recorded the interview, like, I think on last week's podcast, we had, I'd already met Amy Shark, like, but again, couldn't say anything because I was like, ah, doing shit. You know what I mean? She might, it might fall through between now and Sunday. You never know. So uh, that's one of the hardest things. So then, like when you finally can announce it, you have to like remember how excited you were about it three weeks ago when this was news to you as well. And then be like, guys, guess what? Amy Shark's on the fucking show. When I've known that for a month. But um, that, I would always say that is one of my least favorite things about being a creator is like the. I work so hard on something and then it's like, oh, I can't release it yet because of this. Oh, I just want everyone to know. But um, yeah, then the moment you do release it, it's like a lot of hard work has paid off. Now, guys, well, we need to talk about episode 100. It's coming up on the podcast. We're at episode 94 now, which means we're six episodes away and it's getting real damn close. And last week I asked you guys to suggest um, things and activities, maybe event, or some things that we could do in episode 100 of the podcast. And guys, your suggestions have been bang on. Um, you might have seen my, I had one idea during the week. Uh, you may have suggested, uh, sorry, seen my suggestion of it. Um, I saw that uh, The Bachelor, uh, Channel 10 have been promoting the new season of The Bachelor is coming up. Uh, soon, and uh, I thought perhaps we could do a premiere screening of uh, the Honey Badger's Bachelor debut. If you don't know who the Honey Badger is, it's Nick Cummins. He's the new Bachelor. He's an ex-Australian uh, Wallabies player. He's a rugby guy. He's a bloody legend. Go watch his post-match interviews. They all go viral. And I truly say that this will be, mark my words, the best season of The Bachelor ever. We're talking it could be Tim Robard's season. And Tim, we all know that Tim's my favourite batchy. So, we're talking beating Matty J and, or Sam. You know what I mean? I've got a lot of lot of batchy faves, but um, this season is looking to be absolute premium content for all. So, I thought perhaps that we could do like a premiere screening at a pub. So, and when I say premiere screening, just a pub with a TV. We all meet up. We watch the app. We'll get some cheeky muffins provided. We'll give them a slap. Then after the episode's finished, we start the podcast. We do a full rundown of the episode. Um, maybe we'll try... I'll try I, I don't know what I can organize in six weeks, but hopefully try to get some sort of Bachelor-related guest. Who knows? I mean, I don't know anyone who's been on the show, but hey, that's what Instagram's for. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um... That was one of my ideas, that we have a live podcast watching The Bachelor together. And it doesn't have to be at a pub, by the way. I was thinking it could even be so funny if we did it at someone's house. Like, <laughs> like one of you guys. Like, you just we just do it at, like... 
Like, n not someone who has a family or whatever, because that's rude to their parents, but, like, we just, like, if anyone here, like, has a share house, and then just, like, is willing to invite, like, 30 people around to their share house, and we just, like, do a live podcast from your house in Melbourne, that will be awesome. Or even in another city. I'm still open to going to another city and doing it. It's just really expensive, and, which, like, the, okay, the only pl way the share house thing will work is in Melbourne, because... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to charge tickets to come to that. But if it's if we, if I did an interstate live podcast, it would have to be at a venue because in order to afford me to be able to do that, it'd, it'd have to be like paid entry because then I would lose heaps of money. Um, so yeah, that was one of my ideas. But now I'm going to go through your suggestions, right? So I put it out on my Instagram. I put it out on the podcast last week, and heaps of people hit me up. These are the suggestions that um, rolled in. And now look, some were better than others. I will admit. Some uh, had, for example, the first one, do one silent dab for each episode. So, again, there's a lot of ideas. This is a brainstorming session. I'm not saying these are going to be what we do. This is just all the ideas. Um, Simo from the radio show said, uh, get Simo on. He was the only person who suggested that. Um, Darcy said, slap 100 muffins at 100 different locations. Um... That that would be quite an achievement, and I really think that's that's in contention. Uh, release the pigeon interview now, guys, 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 guys. This was the most suggested thing for episode one hundred. Where's the Peter Pigeon interview? The world's ready. How would you know if the world's ready? You weren't there. All right. All these people trying to tell me when the world is ready to hear the Peter Pigeon interview. That's, oh, that's like going to Subway and telling the people how to make a sandwich, all right? They, they know best. Just shut those bloody flappers and order a sandwich, all right? Let them do their job and let me do my job as a pigeon interviewer, seasoned and experienced veteran who has interviewed many a pigeon, okay, one, one pigeon in their time, all right? And yes, people who were there on the day of the live podcast, I think it was episode 50, 50 episodes ago, no, they know, all right? Of course they know. They know what happened, they know what he said, and they know why I'm not releasing it yet. There's about 40, 50 people who were there, and... They've never asked, they've never said, Luke, you should release the Peter Pigeon interview. No one who was at that event has ever said, Luke, you need to release the Peter Pigeon interview. Because you know what? They heard it and they know the world's not ready. But the world's not ready yet. Episode 94, there's no way today you guys are hearing the Peter Pigeon interview. There's just absolutely no way. But by episode 100, hey, the world's an ever-changing place. The world... The <laughs> The, the, the world is it's unpredictable and in six weeks time we might hit that point in evolution and society's progress and all the stars may align into the shape of a fat bird and perhaps maybe maybe I'm not going to say definitely because who knows if the world's going to be ready by then but maybe the Peter Pigeon interview may be played on the episode 100 Thank you all for suggesting it, and that is my answer, okay? It's not up to me, really. It's up to the world. Um, uh, memoirs of a white guy, but every word Luke says is replaced with my name, Jeff. Uh, that was sent in by uh, Amy. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, that's pretty much every episode, anyway. Listen to every single Panic! at the Disco song. I don't think that would be uh, great content, and I think we would get copyrighted pretty quick. So perhaps not that one. Uh, Papa Shack is for 100 hours straight. No, that's four days I'll fall asleep. Um, oh, come to England? Uh, no. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> Beyblade Battles. Um, that That's left to field shit. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever really mentioned Beyblades too much on the podcast. Um, we could do like a maybe a 90s nostalgia-themed podcast where everyone brings along their Beyblades. You know those, like, little uh, 
skateboards that all like the, this is mainly guys but like those finger skateboards I don't know they're called like top decks or something like that and you like put two fingers on them and you skate them along walls and then like the whole world just becomes your st- your skate park you know what the douchiest thing ever was the kids if you know what I'm talking about you'll know this the kids who like had those little skateboard things great that's fine I had them too but they were the douchebag kids in like grade 2 who bought the half pipe ramps to school dude fuck that kid man the whole point of those skate parks is Everything becomes a ramp, you know. The, the whole school courtyard was a ramp. All right, you don't need to bring a little. Eh, you do in class, fucking nerd. All right, um, but yeah, maybe we could do like a like a not nineties because after obviously a lot of you are under eighteen or eighteen, which means you were born in the two thousands. So we could do a nineties or two thousands uh, kids uh, nostalgia podcast where perhaps we you know dress up as Power Rangers and play with Beyblades. Um, that sounds, that sounds dope, actually. Um, uh, Alex said you should do a Shrek or Toy Story episode. Um, we could do a live episode from a swamp. If anyone knows of a swamp land that reminds you of Shrek Swamp, um, or if anyone has access to Andy's room from Toy Story and knows any of the toys, perhaps we could get Buzz Lightyear. Um, or Bo Peep on as a guest. Uh, hit me up if you guys have any contacts with Pixar. Um, live pod, live podcast in Sydney. Yep. So let's see. A lot of people suggesting live podcasts for wherever they live. Unfortunately, there is only one episode 100, and I will be only doing one of them. So uh, I, I've yet to decide where that is. Um, list your top 100 episodes of 20 to 1 with Bert Newton. Um, I don't think anyone has any top top episodes of 20 to 1 with Burt Newton, let alone top uh, top 100. Um, I could list my top favourite Burt Newton at the Logies moments. Um, what he said was uh, disgusting, if you didn't hear what he said. And uh, I believe he called himself a, an old poof as well, which is very 2018 of him. Well done, Burt. Um, very progressive stuff. If you didn't hear what Burt said at the, Lo- the Logies, um, go check it out. Um... Yeah, it was just, you know what it was, people, people, I was talking about that with someone else, it was like, people were like, oh, what he said was disgusting, it was horrible, you shouldn't have said that, and I agree, it was a, it was not funny, it was a, it was a, a poor, it was an error of judgment on Bert's behalf, but at the end of the day, you invite some 70 year old guy to, to speak at your event, what do you think you're gonna get? Like some speech like preaching the tr- like transgender people some what do you what do you expect people that's why people are like oh Donald Trump's a racist he's like yeah he's 70 have you ever been into a nursing home Th- yes they're racist and it's not okay but that's that's their lives man they were brought up in a time where no one was calling them out on that shit right so like that's what I didn't get people are like, that was disgusting what Bert Newton said it's like yeah he's 70 like, you give a guy 70 free reign on live TV, he's going to say some fuck shit, right? <laughs> um, eat an entire box of Savoy's in one bite. Uh, no one can do that. Uh, release the Peter Pigeon interview. Uh, well, this one's actually quite a good one. I like this one. Uh, in episode 100, we should go and hit every video easy vending machine in Melbourne. Jeez, that's... I mean, we could do maybe a tour... We could go down like the, around the CBD and we could order like a movie from everyone. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. What else have we got? Clear your throat 100 times. I think I did that at the start of the podcast. Liam uh, said quit. That's very nice, man. So episode 100, perhaps I should quit. That could be the last episode. Um, have a meetup in Melbourne and have everyone just be silent and do a shackers for a minute. One minute of silence. One minute of shackers. I don't mind that. Thank you, Amy. For the suggestion. Um, and by the way, if we do a live podcast, I will be planning to incorporate these ideas into the live podcast. I don't think a minute of silence is great audio. But at the same time, though, I like to think that if even if we did do a minute of silence, those listening at home would be more than happy to play along and sit there in silence, just silently popping by themselves. Just, And I hope you're doing it right now, by the way, if you're listening. I'm still doing it. Jeez, that could be great, actually. Great suggestion, Amy. We might do that one. 
Um, release the Peter Pigeon interview and have a live podcast. Come to New Zealand. Okay, probably not. Uh, not not for my live podcast. I mean, I haven't even been there on tour yet, so it would be a bit weird if I did a live podcast there. Um, become a drag queen, then do a photo shoot in a bath filled with Savoys. I mean, I appreciate your creativity, but I just have no desire to do that. Um, Casey said, eat a scooter. Um, okay. Uh, again, I'm not saying these ideas are bad. I'm just reading most of the ones we got. Uh, just sit around in a circle and talk about how tough it is being white. Uh, that's every podcast, except we'd just be doing it in a circle. But uh, yeah, that, that'd be great. Hit every Maccas in Melbourne with Amy Shark and tell the cashier that Amy Shark says hi. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure if Amy would be up for that. Um, she's got a lot of more highs. You know, I, I, we could do that on Amy's behalf. Um, plus, I've already caught up with Amy Shark this week. You know, I feel like we'd be now wasting her time more than we already did. I did ask her at one point in the video how many times she says hi per week. And she didn't actually give me a proper answer, but I still go check out the interview. Um, a muff slap marathon. That could be good. A whole hour of saying Amy Shark says hi. Eat some spaghetti. Pop a hundred checkers. I'm just going through them quickly now. Go to Love Island and do it. <laughs> you know they filmed that show in Spain, man. Uh, no. Um, come to England and do it. Have a Panic at the Disco themed uh, podcast. Do a live You Don't Own Me. Oh, man. That's cancer. Um, and that's it. So those are the suggestions, right? So technically... I would say the main ones that came in were definitely live podcasts. Perhaps we'll do a vote. You know what? Let's do a poll in the Facebook group during the week. Let's decide what we want to do, and then I'll try and get something happening. All right? Let's do it. Um, if it's a live podcast, we need to have a vote on which city uh, we do it in, and whichever one gets the most votes. I guess that's what that's what we do it in. Um, all right. So I'll answer some questions, and then that will be the end of. The podcast. Um, this one is from Emily. Uh, hey Luke, I love your shit and keep up with the podcast. Oh, I love your shit and keep up with the podcast every week, and I find you hilarious. Thank you very much, Emily. How did you and Emily meet? So now she's referring to my girlfriend, Emily. It's a little confusing because it's two Emilys. When did you realize you liked her too? Thanks, Luke, from Emily. And yes, your girlfriend and I have the same name. What a coincidence. Um, okay, how did Emily and I meet? I swear we told this story. Didn't we tell this in the in the first Me and Emily episode? We met... I'll briefly tell it again. Go listen to the first time. Uh, it's called like the My Girlfriend episode or something like that. Um, it's, it was pretty early on in the podcast, so go check it out. I think we tell the full story. But um, it was essentially we went to high school together. Um, and we didn't really talk to each other in high school, like, before we, you know, like, started dating or whatever. Like, like, we just went in the same friendship group, and then one day, um, I was friends with some of her friends, and then we were like, I started talking to her at the Locker Bay, and then, you know, I, I was just Lukey boy getting his raz on, um, and, you know, because what else are you going to do at school? So, you know, just, push, you know, I was just, there, that was the first, that was the first existence of me following my dreams. Alright, so I was like, yeah, you know what, this girl's hot, I like her, let's do it, alright, Let, let's buddy go in, and, I, and that's what I did. So, um, yeah, that's how we met, and then five years later, here we are, I think five, four, five, that's a long time. Uh, but yeah, that's how we met, and when did you realise you liked her too? Um, it was pretty early on, like, I, I guess I was like... I was attracted to her, and then, like, that's why I started talking to her and stuff. But then the moment I realized, I was like, okay, this is, this could be on here, where I was just like, I don't know, she was different. You know, like, I don't want to be, like, rude and, you know, stereotype, because it, it's not, you know what it is? It's not the girls who listen to this, because I know I've met the type of people who listen to this podcast, and generally, most people who come to my shows have a great personality, right? That's what I've found from doing this and t touring around and meeting all you guys, right? But everyone knows, just from going to university and going to school and stuff, there's a lot of people, girls and guys, who just aren't fun. You know, you hang out with them and you're like, ah, oh, you're a nice person, but you're fucking boring as hell. And, I, like, I just, back before Emily, I, I, I'd speak to, you know, like, you'd try and speak to girls or whatever, and you'd be like, ah, you're just, like, you're not 
not that I think I'm like intellectually superior at all. I'm an idiot, right? But I'm just like, you don't like, there's no spark up in here. Like when I speak to you, I'm not excited. You don't interest me. <laughs> I know that's an awful thing to say, but I'll often speak to people who are, who are just like, the most boring fucking people, and I'm like, uh huh, yeah, oh my god, how does your like? And they've got like, yeah, you know, my girlfriend was like this, and I was like, how is your, is your girlfriend as boring as you? Like, how the fuck does someone like you? <laughs> That's horrible. But like, yeah, it was just like, it was finally someone who like clicked with me, and I was like, oh my god, she gets me, and like, she was into weird shit. We talked about like music and bands that we're into. At the start, like, she was into, like, 14-year-old girl bands. I was into 14-year-old girl bands. She was funny. I thought I was funny. Like, I don't know. You know what it was? It was a definitely Emily's sense of humor that got me. That was it. It was just, like, this person I can have a laugh with. And literally from, like, the first, like, week into our relationship, I think we had, like, 10 in-jokes of just, like, garbage. Like, the first one was, like, uh, Hazard Man. I was telling her about this guy at this event I was at once who just kept pointing out hazards. Like, he kept putting cones on shit. It was, like, weird as he's pointing out hazards. So then whenever we were, like, out and about and we were, like, chatting on Facebook or whatever, because that's what you do when you, like, first get to know someone. You're just, like, texting them all the time. We'd, like, be out and about and I'd be somewhere and I'd see a hazard, like, a stick on a path and we'd just, like, take photos of hazards and send them to each other and be like, oh, look, found a hazard. And the fact that I found someone willing to participate in that garbage with me, I just knew. I was like, this this girl is amazing. you, you got to lock that down quick. There's no one else who would participate in that a week into knowing someone. So that was it. I guess Emily's, Emily's shit, shit memeing, uh, that, that's what sealed the deal. Uh, thank you for the question, Emily. <coughs> oh, I'm dying. All right. That is the end of the podcast, guys. Keep sending me suggestions for episode 100. We'll do a poll during the week on the Memoirs of a White Guy Facebook group. Get in there if you're not already part of it. There's over a 1,000 people in there now. Uh, it's getting pretty fun in there. There's always heaps of garbage. So, hey, go go get more of that, that sweet, sweet content during the week. Um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for listening. I will see you guys next week. Actually, next week, I think I'm going to be joined by uh, Lewis. Uh, we're going to be talking about his comedy special, which comes out tomorrow. Oh, no, today. I'm recording this on the Monday, but it comes out today, the 24th of July. So, go get Lewis's uh, comedy special, Death Threats Don't Scare Me. Uh, yes, yeah, it's awesome. I went to his premiere screening on Tuesday and met a few of you guys there, actually. So, thank you very much for coming up to say hi. And also, with that... Um, I got a message afterwards of someone being like, oh man, uh, you told me that, uh, oh yeah, okay, this is what happened. I, I want to explain this to people. Um, so I don't, it, it came off with me looking like a bit of a dick, I think. But um, I was at Lewis's premiere screening and I kind of arrived maybe like 10, 15 minutes before it started. And obviously we have lots of like a, we have a quite a large crossover audience because we do a lot of stuff together at the radio show. And stuff, which is really cool. So there was lots of people who listened to this podcast there, which was great. And um, they were like, "Hey, Luke!" Like, you know, and went up to say hi. And a couple of guys asked me for a photo before it, and I just went like, "Oh, yeah, of course. I definitely get a photo with me with you. Can we just do it at the end? Because you know, it's this is Lewis's thing, and it's not a like it." I, I kind of, I, I was quickly, like, I think I was a bit short with them, which is why it probably came off as rude. I, I just went, yeah, of course, uh, I'll, I'll be around afterwards, come find me, and we'll definitely get a photo. Thanks so much for checking out my stuff, man, really appreciate it. And then I kind of went inside. And the reason I did that was because, and Lewis does it at my shows, I do it at his shows if I'm not, like, performing or whatever. It's just that, like, it's not about me. Like, you know what I mean? It was Lewis's thing, and I was there to support him as a friend. And I, not that I don't appreciate and, you know, I, I love when people come say hi, it's great. Um, but yeah, I didn't mean to be rude to you, man. And then afterwards, I think I didn't, he didn't come find me or he must have had to go or something. And I never ended up getting a photo with that guy and he messaged me on Facebook saying, look, what the fuck or whatever. And then, anyway, that is why, man, that uh, I, I might have, so sorry if I was rude to anyone. I really wasn't trying to be, I just didn't want to make his big night, like, 
It's four years of work has gone into that comedy special. It was the premiere screening of it, the first time anyone had ever seen it. I knew how much of a huge deal it was for Lewis, um, which is why I just was like trying to lay low and have a great night and support, uh, m like, yeah, my mate. So, uh, yeah, but thank you everyone who, who did come say hi afterwards. And obviously, like, I, I hung out with a lot of you, which was really fun. Um, and yeah, sorry to that guy. I wasn't trying to be rude. I just didn't want to make uh, his night about me because that's not what it's about. And Lewis does that at my shows as well. Like, after the shows, like, sometimes during the comedy festival, Lewis went and saw a couple of my shows, and, you know, obviously people recognize him when he's there, and people get us to get photos and stuff, and Lewis is like, oh, you know, I'll be outside if you want to come get my photo, like, when, when you're done with Luke, kind of thing. Because that's, you know, it's, it's my show, and he doesn't want to be, like, in the foyer taking fucking photos with me while I'm doing, like, taking photos with people while I'm doing my meet and greet, or whatever. Because it's weird, and it's... It's, it wasn't about him, that was my show. And it goes both ways. So yes, that is my explanation of that. I don't mean to come across as a dick. I was just trying to, you know, support my boy and not make it about me. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Go check out Lewis's uh, special. But yes, Lewis will be on the podcast next week talking about his comedy special. It's a super interesting uh, story and process of how it all happened. And yeah, it's going to be great fun. And send in questions if you have questions for Lewis and I. Um about radio, whatever. Cool. Have a good one. Bye.